Hey everyone, I'm Lisa from Primitive Gatherings and I'm here today with Joanne Blank and we are going to show you how the master at EPP, English Paper Piecing, right? How she does what she does. I have never done it so I might be asking some questions because I'm, like I said, I've never done this so hopefully I'll answer some of the questions that you may have. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, I'm just going to show you how I do English paper piecing. It's not the rule. Uh, lots of people do it different ways, but this is how I do it. And I'll do it clearly enough, I hope, so that if you've never done it before, you will understand how we do it. Now, and the project that we are doing is interconnected, which was the 2020 summer block of the week. Right. Okay. Okay. So, I um, love English paper piecing, um, and one of the main reasons is that I have uh, back issues, and the only thing I have to stand up to do English paper piecing is the ironing. And so everything else can be done in my chair with no pain. And so, for this to start, I use one of these um, cutting mats. Rotating cutting mats. It's a rotating. And um, I put my um, um, Is that a sandpaper board? Yeah. I put a real light weight sandpaper. So real fine? Real fine. Fine grit? Okay. Right. And I draw my templates on the back of my fabrics and just draw around them and then cut them out with the scissors. So show them how you trace that. So see yeah. she has that traced on there after. Right. Okay. Now, uh, normally um, someone is asked about why are you doing it on the back? Well, historically all of my uh, English paper piecing has been done with a template with a window cut out. And Therefore, you have to, if I draw the window, then I can put my papers on there and line it up correctly so that I can fussy cut. And I love fussy cutting uh, English paper piecing. Um, because these were custom made, they did uh, not come with the window cut out. And so um, I cut everything by hand. Uh, someone has already commented that they would like, that they cut it out with a uh, small rotary cutter. And I think because the window is not cut out, this is perfect for them to do that. To use the, to use the, the, the smallest rotary cutter. Yeah. Right, okay. right. And so it's really a plus for them that we couldn't get it with the window cut Cause out. Because with the plastic all the way through that makes they have stabilization? I would think that would make it so much better okay. than with the uh, window in it. Okay. So then after I have these cut out, I take my papers and I am not a gluer on the edge of my papers. Tried that, didn't like it. But I had the glue stick already bought and then when I started I realized that for fussy cutting the glue in the center of your papers is perfect for lining it back up. And so for these I'm just doing what I usually do and for these are huge pieces compared to the little um, hexagons. So this is how I put my glue on and then I baste everything. Okay, so what are you using there? I am I'm using the uh, Soline um, glue stick and then those are the um, refills. refills. And um, for the small one and for little hexagons, all I do is just make sure I got a nice little bit of glue. I put it on. And then my phone usually sits next to me. Sure. And, and then when I make a stack, and then I just put it to the side and stack my phone, put my phone on it to for hold it down. Just for five minutes. Okay. And then I... Uh, As a weight to hold. To, right. Okay. <laughs> and so for these big ones, this was new for me too. But I just went around the edge like this. The inside edge. 
Not like not at where, the outer edge, yeah. Not, not where, where you're going to sew. Okay. Right. And that's all I did. Okay. And then it's attached to um, your um, fabric. All right. So. And then you baste it on. Now, I asked that they do white papers for uh, to help me thread my needles. And that also was not uh, given to us because it was custom made. So, besides your phone sitting next to you, put a pad of paper, and that way you can thread your needle against the white. Don't do one piece of paper, it'll fly off somewhere. And that way, you can also write notes as you uh, get phone calls or whatever. But you're already threaded, huh? Yeah, I'm already <laughs> threaded. I wasn't going to do that here. So, um, for the um, leaf one, you can see that it gathers around, but you will also note that this, where you're going to be stitching, is smooth. So you just have to just put that in around the corner. So you're like and then you going just kinda, in and out of the paper. I go in and out of the paper. The only time and our stitches are. A little bit bigger than a quarter. Yeah. Oh, three eighths. Yeah. And you know, you know, as you're doing this one, you got to get a little bit of the gather. So come on in, Kaylee, nice and close, so you can see that. So if you can tilt it a little so bit just, toward the camera too. Yeah. You just push on it, get that little bit of a gather there. It's okay. You have to have it. So it is a stab stitch. It's not a rock. No, it's okay. a stab in and out. Okay. And I actually use a chenille needle with the sharper point, um, number 24. 24? Yeah. Okay. Yep, I use the chenille needle for that. Okay. And this is just basting it, right? It's just basting it. So you're using a thread that uh, uh, your grandma had or something, old thread that you have in the... Um, that you don't care about. Something you, you're gonna throw, inexpensive, you're gonna something you moved on to, like maybe you started with a different thread and now you're using Orifil, right. so you use those older threads. I use everything up. Okay. I, I even have my mother-in-law's had her bobbins. Okay. And I took, Anything. I took the thread off her bobbins and... Does it matter it is, if it's polyester or whatever? Doesn't. Okay. I, I remove all the basting. Right. So it doesn't stay in your quilt. Right. Okay, so now this is the... Now this is the... Um, holly light. shape. This is your light. <laughs> this is your light. And here, the, you do the same thing, except you have the curve going an inner. Inner. Yeah. And you can make these stitches really as far apart as you want. Like in a, a one inch hexagon, I just, I Did do the corners. Did you get how she folded that over? You can see that good? Okay. I can do it again. Um, and do you use just your fingers? You don't like clip that? I or use my fingers. Okay. Okay. So just as a hint, this is the first time I've ever bought clips. Okay. And a couple of these, when I started, I, I got better at it. The glue didn't stick quite as good for some reason. And so, actually, say the glue had gotten loose here. In the middle. And I, then you can just clip it on mm -hmm. and it just saves you re-gluing. Mm -hmm. So that's one way the, I really liked the clips for the first time ever. Okay. Now, you're over here by this corner and I did it on this side already. Can you see real close? I had to clip. So it laid flat and so spread now, out. Right. So I actually clipped both sides at the same and before time. Before you it. stitched it. Before I stitched it and I don't go all so the way. So you leave about an eighth of an inch? Yeah, I okay. leave a little. So she, she cuts in but not all the way. So she right. leaves about an eighth inch of fabric. Right, because it will stretch. Yeah. You can see that there. Yeah. yeah. 
So now I'm going to bring the corner over, tack it. I was going to say the only time I have not basted to papers is when I use the 3 fourth inch hexagon. Okay. Because there so I could go there I could go from corner to corner and feel comfortable that everything was tight enough. Okay. And the problem I had with tight enough was that when I glued, I was taught to glue yes. on my edge. Right. And it got so tight All right. when you put that glue on. That was going to be that, my next question was, tell me why you don't glue again. Okay. And, cause it that's so tight. This, is, this is, takes time, right? Where gluing right. would, you'd be really fast. But the reason why is it's too right. tight. And I got all kinds of time. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care how long this takes. Right. So it was so tight that it was harder to get the needle into the edge. Uh huh. Plus, when I I made a practice one, and when I took the papers out, it shredded the fabric. Okay, the glue did. Yes, as okay. I tried to get the papers out. So that was the end of that. So if somebody is a diehard gluer, can they still do this? Yes. With gluing. It, okay. What, whatever you love to do. Okay. If you're a the, gluer, we're just explaining how you've done we're this just beautiful telling, quilt and what you find more most successful. I'm just telling okay. you how I do it and why. Right. So you can see, you just stitch around. Yep. So how how long does it take you to do this shape? I'm sure you know uh -oh. after doing all these. It's written in the book, but yeah? I don't remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. Written in the pattern. No. Oh, on oh, your in my book. book. I mean, I just want to know: Does that take you five minutes each? Does right. that take you? You know. Yeah. So this. I'm is, all about. This is time still and my efficiency. basting thread. Okay. And I'm going to start here in the middle of the straight side. Did you side. explain that we have three eighths inch? Yeah. Seam allowance. Three eighths inch. Eight. Ah. And why I, is that versus a quarter? Okay. I've had a quarter. Okay. Hated it. Because you asked specifically for three eighths. I did. Yeah. Because the half inch, the, the quarter inch, just doesn't give me enough fabric as it comes over the back. Okay, so it's just I, a little more insurance, a little bit more I, easier to. Yep, okay. I love the three eighths. I, I will never purchase something with a half. Okay. Okay, I'm starting in the straight side on this one, and I'm showing you this on the, um, the, this rectangle is the rectangle one. Yep. Because. This is a, a slight curve. curve. There's yes. a slight curve. On the ends, and, short and, ends. And as you're doing this, you will appreciate more and more that that curve is there. So I'll tell you when I baste, I know it's there, but I just turn over the corner. And, and again, these and stitches what, are about a quarter of an inch. Right. What I love apart to do. Apart and long. I, I, I press this and sometimes I even go like this with your needle with my needle because I want to be able to see that curve because okay. because as you're stitching this together you're going to love that that's a little bit of a curve there and it's just my reassurance that all of a sudden something didn't go straight across okay and straighten out so even though you say you take extra time to baste I do. This quilt behind us took you how long? I, d I don't know for sure. Okay. But, but it was a matter I, of a couple of months. It wasn't okay. like I know exactly. years. Okay. This started <laughs> on the 17th of March. Mm -hmm. I started it. The pandemic was just hitting. <laughs> Perfect timing. <laughs> and I t stitched this all the way through the really bad part it's part of the pandemic yeah. and it was 10 weeks 10 weeks so 10 weeks i got it done in 10 weeks but remember we did have the pandemic and i was sitting at home yeah but you <laughs> said like only six hours a day probably you worked on it right and sometimes because to me if i if i'm at home and i couldn't go anywhere and i didn't have anywhere to do anything to do i'd be like stitching 12 hours a day on it well but you said that you can't do that physically well i could <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, remember that some of my hours spent on this quilt was totally prepping and prepping mm -hmm. and, and basting and um, yes, and cutting out. 
cutting out and organizing. Yep. Everything takes time. Yeah, but 10 weeks is not like, I mean, this is going to take people a year to do. And, and that's okay. Right. Right. Yeah, that's okay. Right. So when you... Um, but what, I was just impressed that she only did it six hours a day and she still got it done in 10 weeks. Right. So, yeah. Right. So I suppose if you do an hour a day times, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. so they just got to spread that out a little bit. Okay. So, okay, so here how, we have our shapes okay. pasted. So like one row across will be um, your light with four rectangles on it and then you add this. And one of the main emphasis that I want to get across to you and I put it in the instructions is that you, if you are right-handed, mm -hmm. e either way, because it's gonna go this way, and then again this way, and then this again. Um, always from your back. It's, the back is going to be t to you when you're doing your um, uh, flat back stitch, which I had to learn how to do mm -hmm. when Lisa showed this to me. And I thought, whoa, curves. Because it's I on got, a curve. I so got the a flat figure. back stitch works right. best for curves. Right. Okay. So. Um, but you always want what's in your left hand, and if you're right, if you're left-handed, it'll be the other direction from your back, not from your front. Um, you always want only one thing in this hand. Okay, so I see what you mean. You, you want can't hold a lot, right? With and, your left, and you can do it both. You know both, but you always because of the size. You always want to add. You always want to add from the back. So it's actually on the right because when you flip it, it's on the left. Right. Okay, I get it. Yes. So when you're picking your stuff up, you have to, uh, to figure out what I'm going to And they'll figure it out real that. fast. They will. Okay. It's just that it took me a while. I'm going, wow, there's got to be a better way. Okay. And it's always got to be one thing on this side for the right-hander, not three of them. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. So what I did is I would uh, take my light and I would put on my four rectangles. Rectangles, and I was used to um, English paper piecing uh, the way uh, you whip stitch. Okay. Which is just putting this no. on. So this is all ladder. You can do flat back stitch. Oh, not lap stitch. Yeah, flat back. You can do everything with flat back stitch. Okay. I did not. Okay, so you have to explain which where you did what. Only straight. All right. Your straight edges. It's so, the only place that you can do a. Um, and you're going to show us that. Yep. I'll show you that quick a yep. minute. Uh, anybody who has any familiarity or looked up um, videos, I I hide all my knots. I go in. Okay, now let's back up. So you're using Aurifil thread. Yes. You're using what kind of needle? I use this the, uh, the straw. The eleven straws. And I would use Ooh. milliners, either one. Okay. And the reason I do, and you don't have to use what you're comfortable with, okay. is that I'm a hand applicator. So you like that straw needle. So I've used the straw needles for twenty years. Right. For so have I. A hand <laughs> applique, and. Okay, so you can see how much thread is on this. A lot. That entire quilt was made with this one spool okay. of thread. One color, didn't change Because it doesn't matter because you're always sewing a dark to a light. Right. And with, you'll see with the flat back stitch, you will not see right. any of the thread. So why didn't you pick white? Oh, I, I never pick a light. Okay, good. I always go with the dark. Right, right. I agree. And the question was... Because I'd rather see dark thread on light than light thread on right. dark. Right, and when I said to Jess, before I saw the fabrics, am I going to want a blue thread or a gray thread? And it was obvious it needed to be the gray mm -hmm. and the darker gray. Right, yeah. for a nice blender. It'll blend into the right. blues, it'll blend right. into the grays. Yeah. Yep. Okay, okay, so your normal... Um, EPP stitch is is a is a. Um, so you said no knot. Always a knot. Always a knot. I hide the knot. Hide the knot. No, in, in the fold. You know what? Nobody will ever see it. Okay. Okay, and then 
I make another knot on the top. And you just make a loop and go through it? Yeah. Okay. And then it's just a whip stitch. Across the two seams. Yep. Catching not the paper, but no, just the fabric. Never the paper, just and the fabric. And how close would you say that is? That's pretty close. Uh, let's put it this way. I don't care how many stitches I make, and I guarantee you it's more than you'll make on your machine. Okay. So I'm, nice and I'm tight, guessing, close together. I'm guessing 15 to 20 and stitches. And you just kind of do a snug. You're not like pulling it so tight so they sink in. No. Okay. No. I'm, I'm guessing 15 to 20 whips. In an, an inch. inch. In an inch. Okay. Well, that's and, a good. They and, can count then. And and do what you're comfortable with. Right. Some people will do more. Some people will do less. Right. So it's just a whip on the straight edges. And you, and you want that little, just enough fabric there to be able to get through. Mm-hmm. And I have heard people on on the internet say they catch one thread. Well, I'm sure I catch more than one thread. Just fine. Okay. Okay. Looks great. Okay, I'm gonna take that. So here, let's off. just just come up close, so you can see that you can't see any thread. And that is with the whip stitch. And that is with the whip stitch. So you're not that seeing any thread in there at all. Right. Okay. Okay. Now we are to the flat back. Okay, stitch. the new stitch. This is the new stitch for me. I watched it, and I watched it in a video where they had all rectangles put together and, and squares, and so they had all these things turned over, and that's important. This one is going to be much easier than that because you are not going to come to these pieces turned over as they're, often. They're on an angle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the flat back stitch, let me get my thread. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I saw this on there also, and I had already decided, but I went back and looked again. To start out, to hold it like this and keep that even is hard. Okay. So, and they suggested too. Point to point? Just do it just like you do your whip stitch with the straight ones and make a couple stitches and that will stabilize it there. Oh, so a couple whip stitches to start. Two, three, one, uh, two. I sometimes did three. Okay. Because, you know, that is a curve there. Right. But you can't really tell it right at the beginning. Mm hmm So you are moving this way a little bit. You're not piling them on top of each no, other? No, no, I'm moving. Okay. Yeah. I'm moving. Okay, now you have that stabilized. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're watching TV and you get a little distracted and maybe you forgot what you were actually doing. That and doesn't happen at all, does no. it? No. Yeah. <laughs> but anywhere or along Or somebody here, interrupts you. Right. Anywhere along here, if you start flat backing, and you accidentally whip, whip, accidentally go into the top layer and not catch the bottom. Oh, like that. So what she means is the fold. Right. If you catch the if fold, you, but not, okay. the, not the edge of the real shape. Okay. You have to always pull that back, back out of the way yep. to get the edge of the cardboard right. shape. Okay. So you Not the fold. Okay. Flat back stitching is still a whip stitch. Okay. But Only what it means is you're laying the back, you're, you're on laying the back. Them together, you're sitting them in your lap on your pillow or whatever. And so instead of having them this way, you're having them this way, but you're still whip stitching. You're still whip oh, stitching. Okay. So it's not that difficult. Huh, yeah. Okay. So it's if like you whip. learn one thing from me today, I'm sure they've already learned three things. But if you learn <laughs> one thing, that you will tear out, I, I want you to tear out, is that if you get to a spot, see how we're just whipping that? Yeah. If you get to a spot, say down here, 
and you start whipping and you have you haven't moved this to the side you get yeah you do the fold instead you have got to take that out because I, I did it twice. You tried it. <laughs> I tried that. Yeah. Okay, I did it twice. And I said to myself, ah, that's such a little space. Maybe it's okay. And I turned it over and there was a pocket. Mm. And now, the pocket is little. But do you want a quilt that has all these little pockets no. on the front that you really can't see? But you but don't. They're there. Yeah. And what if the long armor hooks one? Hooks one mm -hmm. with their needle, and you will be so sorry. Right. So, so you just want to pull that out of the way when you get there. You have to pull that out of the way. Now, and we're talking about those folds. Right. Now, on a picture in your um, instructions, I actually took a, a needle, a, a, a pin, and pushed this to the side. And tacked it in there. And tacked it in there to show you that you've got to move that out that. of the way. Right. Okay. Now, you would think, oh, maybe you could put a clip over here to make sure it's going to line up perfect. Yeah. But it keeps coming loose. Okay. <laughs> and uh, honestly, the thing, if you start from the top and work your way down, it will fall into place. In the place. right place, yep. Because everything is and, cut. And, and if perfect. it isn't quite right, you can always hold uh, it there and uh, make sure it and fits. make sure you you squeeze a little bit in the in last there. little yep. bit. Ease it in. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So the flat back, back stitch, stitch is actually a whip stitch, but the pieces are flat. Right. Okay. Yes. All right. Did you put the other video on how the the other persons in the pattern where they could watch that or not? Or you just googled it? flat back stitch. I just googled, well the first thing I googled was how to um, EPP curves. Okay. And videos just came up. Okay. And um, isn't it great that we can just video? Yeah. yeah. And actually the first one I saw was not curves. It was those rectangles? It was, it was rectangles or squares. You know and they were pushing these things to the side constantly and I thought oh for this one because they're bigger you have all this nice space to go with um, the flat back stitch that you don't have to be pushing things around all the time I mean this person was doing little squares. So we have big shapes so this is really nice yeah. This is so much nicer for you that you have a big shape. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, when you get to the edges of your quilt, let's do the sides first. All you have to do is take your papers. So finish the whole inside first, so you're not cutting up papers you still want to use. Mm -hmm. And you just so cut. We're talking about this shape yes. and this shape. You just cut your paper in half. I put the glue on, put it on. Then Directly in half or? Directly Three. in half, okay. peak to peak. Peak to peak. Yep, and then base this on. Okay. And then for the edge. Yeah. This is your edge? I know quilts have a half, a, a half inch. Quarter inch. A quarter inch edge mm -hmm. for your binding. Mm -hmm. But I cut mine the 3 eighths. To be consistent? Give me that little bit of edge. Insurance, okay. Well, you that little bit of insurance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and, good. And yes, I cut the three eighths so that if you had to straighten it out a little bit, you could. Mm -hmm. Yes. Little fudge factor. I put the fudge factor yep. in there. All right. Okay. So do you do, do you cut it after you sew it? Obviously. So after I had this in here, Basted. then I, I measured with my ruler the three eighths inch and cut this away. And then you stitch it in. And then I stitch okay. it you don't, in. You don't it stitch was, it in like this size? No. Okay. No. I cut this away and then the edges would hopefully line right. up. And then for um, for this one, it was the same thing. Point to point cut. Point to point cut. You'll see that. Yep. So what, what she's talking about is, it's right see how here. it gave me, I didn't cut any of these off. They're right because of her three-eighths, 
I yes. put my when I trim this quilt, I put my ruler on, and you know sometimes, the you know it gets pulled a little bit in sectors. I just kept doing the quarter inch. I didn't just go straight. So this is our shapes for the bottom, the top and bottom, the top and bottom edges. Yeah. And so you can, I actually did one here and one here, oh, okay. and and repeated them, two so out of the same that's one. That's this one. Right. And and that is. Um, and then these are this one. Right. And then yeah. the bigger, where's that one? Oh, I'll show you. <laughs> okay. So this is your bottom and your shapes. Oh, this is this. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, um, yeah. And and I did the same thing. And, and for here, you can do, do two and one here also yep. because, and, and I did. Okay, so. not to waste any shapes. Right. Now, what we have left is the corner. Oh, okay. I'm like, where is that? I'm like, so this okay. is this corner? Correct. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, it, it's one of these. Oh, okay. But you made it big just because you didn't know how I much you needed. I made it big and then cut, cut, it, cut it square. Okay. So, so for each corner, you four just had to, you just had to make four of these mm -hmm. and I just took can you do one here and one here or did you want well, I wanted four <laughs> different ones yeah and um, so I just put this on and then um, sewed this on the corner mm -hmm. on your curve there okay yeah because most of it's going to get in trimmed the curve out. yep and then that's I just, why you made that so much bigger than than these ones because you needed right. because I needed extra room. I wanted to be sure I had yep. enough, and, and it was it's only just, four. And it was just easy. It was four yep. of them, okay. and and then I just squared it off. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. What Any else do we have? No. No. That's it. Okay. So that's the it. only other thing is quilting and binding. Then once you get done, right? Right. Okay. And and you're doing all your edges at one time. And um, so, so you do the whole every center. Time, every time I did a section, I took out some papers okay. that were that I could take out that weren't touching anything in the inside. Yeah, right. And so, because um, you didn't have papers that did the whole thing. No, right. you want to. And you it. don't need enough papers for the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. How many glue sticks did you go through? Do you remember? I think five. Okay. Did you just put all those in the kit, or didn't, don't you know? I do not know. Okay. What and if you glue, did. you'd use more too. So. All right. right. I think I used five batches of glue sticks, but I I love the glue sticks, um, and actually to put clips on um, because something came loose did not happen very often. Okay. Very little, and I actually used. Um, the um, clips again on my edges. All right. That not, makes sense. not just yeah. It just helped, helped on you. the it okay. helped me on the edges. So I was glad I had them. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I hope we uh, answered any of your questions. Look for Joanne's trunk show that we're going to do on all of her EPP projects. Right. How okay. many do you think you have? Hmm. Maybe ten. Okay. So look for that video that we're going to do later on and we'll, we'll count them we'll, count we'll, them we'll find do. out yeah. a lot do. joanne has done a lot of them i'm amazed uh, at okay what she gets done okay because of my back i did a lot of the uh crazy quilt mm -hmm. um mats, mats and yep. stuff like that and i thought well but you know what this has really been wonderful too for anybody who has back issues uh -huh. and loves handwork so you're not hunched over your machine. Right. You're in your chair. It's my in machine, your lap. My machine. Um, uh -huh. I can only. So you do don't do a lot of wool applique anymore. Actually, <laughs> after those um, wooly mats, wooly mats, yeah. uh, I just fell in love with yeah. this. No, and fell in love with it. And we all go through. Don't you find that we all go through? You like, know what? Spurts we of, need new spurts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. New things. We need to, new things that to, we love to. We're do. always learning. Yeah. Right. There's always yeah. to me you yeah. you can't you never not a student anymore. Right. right. 
Yeah. All right. So thanks very much for hanging out with us. And yes, thank you. Yep. Glad we could Good job, Joanne. Thank you. <laughs>